I'm Dr. Joseph M.T., Department of Sociology, University of Mumbai, and this is E. Patishala Project on Religion and Society. We are looking at Module 9, in which we look at Bhakti in India. Now, Bhakti can be translated as devotion. In the Indian context, Bhakti has got a long and very significant kind of meaning. Because Bhakti stands for a specific way of religiosity which was very specific in its historical origin very specific because religion before that was considered or was gave a lot of importance to either ritualism or knowledge and the, the turn to bhakti was a departure from both ritualism and knowledge based religion Bhakti meant devotion to a personal deity and that devotion to a personal deity and its expressions can be in itself a total religion is something that Bhakti materialized in Indian society. Secondly, such an, an understanding of religion opened up the sphere of religion to all people. Before this, when religion was limited to ritual and to knowledge. It was open only to a, a particular class of people, mainly the Brahmins, and others had a religion or religious experience through the mediation of these Brahmins. Now Bhakti as a tradition broke off from this and opened up the sphere of religion for many others. People from diverse caste groups could now become religiously engaged with very specific reference to personal gods and goddesses. And Bhakti tradition, we can say one of the earliest Bhakti tradition uh, develops uh, in Tamil Nadu. Then we have uh, very clear Bhakti traditions in Maharashtra, in Karnataka, in Uttar Pradesh. And in some sense, it is, it is seen all across India. Another interesting factor that we would look at in this module is also in the way the presence of uh, a significant number of women bhakti saints like Mirabai, Bhinabai and others and the way that they are seen as towering figures of bhakti literature. A third aspect that we will look at is the, the bhakti deities. The bhakti deities are very different from the mainstream Hindu deities though some of these bhakti deities today are seen as avatars or incarnations of major Hindu gods and goddesses. And we also look at another very interesting dimension that is in the bhakti tradition historically has opened up the access to religion for untouchable caste as well. For example, the popularity of uh, bhakti traditions like Kabir Panth and the membership of many untouchables or Dalits in Kabir Panth in colonial times is something very significant to look at. How has this come about? And therefore, bhakti as a religious system, as a way of being one practicing religion, which opened up religion to other castes, castes other than Brahmins, and castes which are actually uh, having a lot of uh, other understanding as well. So this is what we will look at in this module. Now, uh, a small introduction. Bhakti traditions contest Brahmanical superiority and Brahman-mediated worship. They deny the value of sacrifices and ritualism and reliance on prescribed texts for salvation. Bhakti as devotion is defined by ecstatic abandonment and an intensely self-expressive mode of a loving relationship with a personally conceived supreme deity. Salvation in Bhakti was available to all including members from the Shudra, Aarti Shudra and women. Now in simple terms it means like uh, Bhakti just means way of religion which encourages and which focuses on one's personal devotion to a deity. And in that sense it is historically Bhakti evolved as counter to Brahmanical ritual oriented and superiority oriented kind of religious systems. Areas of research in bhakti studies. Areas of research include understanding the social content of bhakti and its ideological imperatives for the lower castes and women. 
Bhakti studies also aim at recovering subaltern voices, studying the Hindu-Muslim syncretic tradition in Bhakti and the genesis of vernacular literary traditions. Debates on authorship suggest that there exists an authorship of Bhakti poems could have been multiple and it would include also a community of singers and performers who preserved these traditions. Now something very important in this to pick out for us is that the kind of bhakti literature that has come down to us is cannot be attributed to single authorship. It would have come down from different communities attributed to single singers, bhakti saints and things like that. Varieties of bhakti. We start with one of the, the first bhakti traditions to evolve which is in South India, Tamil bhakti. In the South, we have the Tamil bhakti movement of the 6th to 9th centuries which includes the 12 Alvar who worship Vishnu and the 63 Nayanars who worship Shiva. They were canonized and introduced in temple worship from the 9th century. From the 11th to 12th, these traditions were appropriated by Brahmin intellectuals. Modern day Dalits have renewed attempt to reclaim their ancient heritage by establishing devotional groups like the Sri Namalwar Sabha. Now, what we know of this Tamil Bhakti is this is one of the first, actually, six to nine centuries and then they got integrated into temple worship and then they were co-opted by Brahmin intellectuals and now there is effort by some Dalit and subaltern groups to retrieve what was what they claim was theirs in the first place. Now we go to another area where bhakti tradition is has been very strong which is the state of Maharashtra. Now the dominant, the major bhakti tradition of Maharashtra is called the Varkari Sampradaya. The Varkari Sampradaya is centered on the worship of Vithal at the temple in Pandharpur. Now Vithoba or Vithal becomes the center of the Varkari Sampradaya. Now the poet saints of the Varkari tradition came from various castes and believed in an annual pilgrimage to the temple town of Pandharpur to be essential. Now what we need to note here is that uh, most of the poet saints of the Varkari Sampradaya, they are from different castes. And uh, the annual pilgrimage which is called the Vari becomes very essential to Varkari tradition. Ideas of Vithal Bhakti spread to the north via Namdev, via the Varkari saint Namdev. The Mahanubha Panth believes in equality of all castes and women and worships Krishna and the saints of their tradition. Now let us also go to North India to see the varieties of bhakti that are active there. Now in North India, there is uh, the bhakti tradition is uh, divided by scholars into two major categories. One is uh, Nirgun Bhakti and the other is the Sagun Bhakti. Now, the, in the Nirgun Bhakti tradition of North India, the deity is unmanifest and non-anthropomorphic. It just means that uh, Nirgun Bhakti does not uh, consider or does not look at God or Goddess in a human form. And uh, God or Goddess can also be unnamed and unknown. Now, Nirgun Bhakti say, sons come from lower caste mainly and include Namdev, Kabir, Ravidas, Pipa. Guru Nanak, Dadu Dayal, Haridas Niranjani and sometimes also Goraknath. Now these uh, Nirgun saints do not believe in rebirth, karma and the Varnashrama order, most of them. Now this is the Nirguna tradition. Now we have the Saguna tradition which is the opposite of it, which uh, looks at God and the deity in human form or in other forms. The Saguna tradition includes Chaitanya, Vallabhacharya, Surdas, Mirabai, Tulsidas and Narsi Mehta and others. Sagun believe in transmigration, rebirth and they accept the Varnashrama Dharma. Now this is very crucial because where the Nirguna tradition of Kabir and others does not believe in rebirth, karma and the Varnashrama order, majority of the Saguna Bhaktas believe in transmigration, rebirth and they accept the Varnashrama Dharma. This is a very crucial kind of a difference between both of these. Also the Saguna Bhakti saints such as Tulsidas have had their own interpretations of Hindu texts such as the Ramayana and others. Bhakti and women. Now we look at the relationship between the bhakti movement and women. The relationship of a woman to God is relevant of understanding gender relationship in any society. 
in bhakti they struggle with the family and family values and is often against marriage the conceptualization of god in bhakti tradition is that of an equal partner and a confidant in vira saivism there is an absence of pollution taboos right to inheritance and equality in marriage in bhakti men speak often speak in a feminine voice so these are some of the points that we can look at in terms of bhakti and women now uh, bhakti as devotion when we look at it many of the bhakti saints look at the their uh, favorite god as a consort or as a, a male counterpart of a female devotee or male or a man himself uh, posing as a female devotee now we look at the bhakti literature that is uh, available to us the bhakti saints came from various occupations and wrote about their common life and composed in the local dialect or the local language now this is very important because uh, one of the ways in which the bhakti movement is very popular and very different and very uh, unique in that sense is that it is not brahmanical whereas uh, brahmins had the monopoly of knowledge construction monopoly of uh, religious texts and other things the bhakti saints were they were from all types of castes and they were from all types of occupation and wrote about their life world and always they talked in the local language now these songs were therefore unpolished didactic hybrid sometimes esoteric and occasionally striking and always very popular now one of the things about the poems of the bhakti saints is that uh, everyone knows them people sing them people can strike a very clear emotional chord or a devotional chord or other cultural chord with the kind of songs that the bhakti saints are belting out kabir songs for example are subjective and aim at interrogating and turning upside down received wisdom so that the kind of uh, for what we call subversion that is in some of kabir's songs have made kabir very popular to many people and which is attested by the fact that a majority of members of what is called the kabir panth happen to be from untouchable ex untouchable and dalit communities in tamil bhakti the saints composed songs of love in separation or what we call viraha bhakti in many different ways now we go to the bhakti theaters bhakti compositions have a collective performative and dramatic appeal tulsidas's ramcharit manas is performed as ram leela in most parts of rural and urban north india now the ram leela performances and the ram katha performances have become very popular and attract large crowds across north india and it has all started with tulsidas's ram ramcharit manas the varkari kirtan parampara is open to all castes and women and is more interactive than any other kirtan traditions now this uh, the kirtans happen in temples and other places over weeks and months of uh, what is also called a saptah in marathi the bharuts are highly entertaining form of bhakti theater involving disguises music dialogue and farce so all in all we can look at bhakti tradition as something that contributes towards a very specific strand of religion in india conclusion module 10 in this module we have looked at bhakti traditions in india bhakti traditions have democratized religion in a way that it opened up religion for all kinds of people to participate in it took away the monopoly of religion from the higher caste and opened up the religious sphere for people from other castes as well and in this module we have looked at this phenomenon and also looked at the works of the different bhakti saints and the context the cultural and the social context in which they lived and in which they related to deity and in which they started religious traditions thank you